I think as an entrepreneur, really what most entrepreneurs that I know of, especially the really successful ones I met, I met, you know, I hung out Necker, Necker Island a few times and I hung out with billionaires and I oh. just see the same thing. It's just, it's just really people who are, who want to mold the world to, ha- to the world that they want to live in. So once you understand that you are all, also a creator and you have that ability to create and shape the world, then that's how you get these ideas to kind of build products that you want to see exist. And like I said, it may take some time for you to for you to get to, but I really believe that once you shift your mind to how you can kind of like as as a as a shift that you are a creator and you take responsibility for the things that you create and you're part of, then the whole everything shifts. This is the Interchange Maker with Jay Wong, the podcast dedicated to purpose driven entrepreneurs and multi passionate individuals. Tune in each week as we bring you an inspiring person and message to help you activate and tap into your inner change maker. Thanks for spending some time with us today, and let's get started. Hello, hello, my dear change makers. Are you guys surprised to see another episode so early? I really hope not. I was not joking when I said I have a tremendous amount of content to get out to you guys to help you and inspire you to have a bigger and better 2016. Last episode was super tactical and today's episode is super high level thinking. So I don't want to miss anything for you guys. If this is your first time hearing the show, welcome to the Interchange Maker. This is the place dedicated to purpose driven individuals and passionate creators. We're all about impact and choosing legacy over currency. Today's podcast is brought to you by Onnit.com. This is the company owned by Joe Rogan and Aubrey Marcus. They have some amazing supplements such as Alpha Brain and various protein powders, supplements, workout gear. Pretty much all their stuff is geared towards making you a little closer to being superhuman. The listeners of the show, obviously you guys can get a discount at www.theinnerchangemaker.com forward slash on it. That is the name of the show dot com forward slash on it. O-N-N-I-T. Now, for today's interview, we have Alex Icon. Now, perhaps you're not familiar with his name, but I promise you that you're familiar with at least one of his companies. He co-founded Luxie Hair with him and his wife, 5-Minute Journal, which Tim Ferriss uses, and most recently, The Productivity Planner. Him and his wife, Mimi, runs a YouTube channel where they have amassed over 300 million views and millions of subscribers and followers on all their social media channels. And I do a soft intro for him in the beginning of the episode, so heads up for the double intro for this episode. Honestly, I wasn't going to release this interview until later on but after re-listening to it this episode I find is so perfect for the new year I had to release it now as mentioned last episode we talked with Brandy CEO of Evelyn Iona Cosmetics probably one of the most tactical episodes I've ever done And it was really great. It's all about starting your business, how funding is essentially useless. And we get into very tactical information about how to get your idea, how to get moving. So be sure to listen to that if you did miss that. This episode, however, is super high level. It's about gratefulness, finding purpose, self-actualization. And it's about viewing yourself as a creator And I think that is something very, very particular that we can talk about more and more. And what can happen once you view yourself as a creator, what can happen to your life once you take responsibility for your art. And as you're going to be able to tell from the conversation, Alex loves his life and he loves these topics. Of course, I get him to tell us more about his story, how in the world he got to where he is now, seven-figure business, world traveler, YouTube star, blah, blah, blah. But the underlying theme here is a really powerful one. It's not about viewing yourself as an entrepreneur or whatever label you have in mind. It's about being a creator, taking responsibility for the art that you put out, the content that you put out. After I got done doing this interview, 
part of it was the inspiration behind some of the vlogs that you can see on my YouTube channel now, Jay Wong TV. And if you have an inkling inside of you to create, we're going to show you how you can do that and why you should do that in this episode. For show notes and links, please go to my website, www.theinnerchangemaker.com forward slash podcasts slash show notes slash 051. Or you can just go to the website and look under the show note tab. Without any further ado, here is the episode with Alex Icon. My dear change makers, we have the one and only Alex Icon with us on the show. Very rarely actually do I do an introduction for the guest like this, but I think his story is pretty unique on, you know, and, I, and we're going to get to it in just a few minutes on how him and his wife were able to build, um, you know, seven figure e-commerce business almost exclusively through YouTube. He's the man behind, you know, the five minute journal, um, the newly productivity planner, and he's someone that I, I look up to. He's built a great personal brand for himself and his wife. Um, so welcome, Alex. Welcome to the Interchange Maker. It's good to be here, man. Great intro. <laughs> thanks, thanks. I, uh, you know, to be honest with you, after looking at all the interviews, it's always really funny. Like you, you put out so much content in terms of you know your YouTube videos and your different businesses. Um, and after listening to a few interviews, I, there's so many different ways that I, you know, that I could have taken this interview. Um, and to be honest, I thought, you know what? I really want to get to, you know, figure out who really the real Alex Icon, the reality behind this, you know, this amazing life that you guys live and that you guys portray through your vlogs and how you've been able to do these product launches. So I'm really curious, through doing all these multiple businesses, being the serial entrepreneur that you are, what really drives you? What's the motivation behind it? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I, I think earlier on, definitely when we started, it was money. Uh, just when you start out and you just don't come from wealth, you think, you know, you really want to create some sort of freedom for yourself. Sure. But, so I'll be honest there. Uh, but once you kind of establish that for yourself and you build some sort of security and freedom for yourself, even you say live the four hour work week like we did for a few years, then you realize it's not really just about that. There has to be something more. So all the kind of new businesses that we're working on now or kind of products we're putting together are all kind of, even the why do we choose to work now, they're all fully fueled by just the um, idea that we can create a better life and better products for people through our businesses and products. And I think that gives you an immense kind of just great feeling and, and really purpose in your own life to be able to deliver just great value and improve the lives of other people. So that's kind of, I would say, the main driver now with everything we do. Just like it, whenever, and that's what we always try to communicate to our team because and to even other people because it's hard to believe for many people when you say, hey, I'm really doing this because I want to deliver amazing value or an amazing product. And But it's really important. So even with our team, sometimes, you know, when we just hire them, it kind of takes a few months for them to kind of to uneducate them in a way to say like no like the main purpose here really is to deliver value it's not to make more sales or you know meet targets because we know through our experience the more value we provide to the world the more we're really able to receive but we always do it unconditionally and just from a giving place for sure you know it's it's funny that you you say that and of you know a little while ago i interviewed i think a mutual friend of ours amir um, and I've seen that you guys have done, you know, interviews before together. But, um, you know, something that came up was this point of when a lot of entrepreneurs get started, it's they start asking questions like, well, how do I make money? Right. Or how do I do this? Or how do I position myself to be, you know, whatever X, Y, Z. And so it's very like me centric. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, I was sharing with Amir that, you know, from, you know, from my personal experience, that didn't do me any good and it didn't do my bank account any good when I was just starting out. But it wasn't until I switched it to, you know, what value am I providing 
um, to my audience, to my students, uh, then that, you know, business kind of started evolving on its own. Um, have you found that to be a pattern with how people think, not just only entrepreneurs, um, but even like you were saying in the beginning of your business is, is very money focused. Um, was it difficult to kind of make that happen in the beginning? I guess so. I, I, there's definitely a struggle at the beginning before anything. So like, I think now being, let's say, in the position that I am now, it's, it's kind of, you know, like, like oh, did I, was I really there? Because I really, like, broke and having, like, you know, no money in my bank account. Was that, like, me? But, and, like, yeah, but it was. And uh, the struggle is real. Um, so I think it's, you know, I think it's very important. It is one of the hardest things to grasp, I think, when starting out, is that idea of it's not about you and it's how you can deliver value to other people. And through that understanding and kind of in your mind that you're really able to create wealth in your own life. It's only what you create. Because the whole idea of money is, is that it's really it's a transfer of value. That's what money is. That's what it represents. So most people think of money of like having money in their bank account uh, for themselves. But the whole idea and history of money is really just is just a, a tool to help us transfer the value. Meaning, people will give you money if they get some value from it. And as soon as you can understand that, even as I did, you are able to really create more for yourself. So, I think yeah, that's kind of just the background. But like I said, yeah, at the beginning it was tough. Um, but that's probably one of the biggest lessons I've ever had in my life. Cool. Well, I, I, I want to, you know, give you a chance at some point to, you know, chat with us about how you guys, you know, where you guys are, your evolution. But I, I do feel like a lot of people that might be listening to this, maybe they're at that first stage um, of where you guys were. Maybe they're a bit driven by money or maybe they're just trying to create a certain level of, of freedom to maybe, you know, align themselves maybe they're you know trying to figure out that that purpose for themselves so could you maybe you know take us back a little bit and i know it's it's quite well documented you know your whole luxy hair story but you know take us back for the first couple years i mean like you know how did you know how did one thing led to lead to another and how did you know this whole kind of snowball into the the youtube empire that you guys have built up from there yeah well i think it all started really um, I'll say with me getting fired from a bank. So initially when I was kind of Mimi and I, we met at, working at a bank, CIBC in Toronto, outside of Toronto, Richmond Hill. And I was just kind of, at first I was the teller, then I kind of got a position of like account manager. Or it is that you're kind of like selling credit cards and uh, right, accounts right. and all that, mortgages and all that stuff. And it's a cool position. And I was kind of, early so like 18 19 uh that was kind of i before, after i graduated, graduated high school i said to myself i want to get a job first before i go to university and then i want to work while i go to university in order for me to kind of have more experience because i know once you graduate the most important thing is your experience yeah. so i thought i'd be kind of like hacking and and i'm gonna get more banking experience when i'm out of university i'm kind of be going to be better suited to get a better position because my dream was really to be like an investment banker and just become maybe vice president of something and really climb the corporate ladder. So I didn't really have this burning desire to be an entrepreneur. Although I do have, if you look, if I look back now, like many kind of different ventures and experiences, I was always tapping into kind of entrepreneurship. So, but my dream of kind of climbing the corporate ladder quickly crashed um, when I got fired and I got fired for actually having a side business. So what I did was I used to ship cars kind of, it was just a small side thing. It was one of my friends kind of got me into it, just being a kind of a middle broker to kind of oversee a deal and help people who would want to purchase something from us and to get into Russia. And sometimes it would be also using say our own money. So there was no conflict of interest. There was nothing to do with the bank. I didn't do anything illegal, but it was more about what I did was I used my kind of corporate, email address for let's say a deal and i right i kind of like worked during the time i was working for a bank and i kind of breached my contract and but that's kind of what happened and the reason i say that is like there's many lessons in that number one is don't ever use your corporate email address or your work email for anything else if you work in corporate yeah because if you're <laughs> watching your every step and just be careful of that um and number two is um 
I've learned that, you know, it wasn't really my ability. I didn't get fired for being a bad employee. I just got fired for not being obedient. And I think that's what most entrepreneurs are. They're, they're rebellious. They're non-obedient. Um, and it was also kind of for, I understood right there and then that when you work for a big corporation or organization, they really don't care about your actual skill set. Meaning, if you look at me then now, right, say it's somebody who's young, who's in university full-time, business school, he's working full-time, mm. he has a side business, and he does things on the side, and he's meeting all those work targets and exceeding his targets, whoa, how can we get you to actually maybe do something more? Maybe we're not utilizing all your talents and to actually take you further. But right, instead, right. they kind of just said, hey, bye. Uh, you, you're going to follow the rules and I understand it's a big corporation you have lots of things to work with however this is where I understood that in life it's, it's really important to be in some way try to control your destiny your life as much as possible so that's when I'm like okay I have two more years of university left let me give this entrepreneurship thing a try so I kind of went through kind of got dabbled in, in kind of couple of things plus the whole social media movement was just starting meaning meaning like twitter and facebook and all that was just coming out and there was just really this kind of new world emerging this new society and media that we're all kind of part of now but i got an early glimpse and i'm like i got really excited and i would say people like you know seth godin like even gary vaynerchuk earlier on and in tim ferris with us for our work week were really kind of like sure kind of just pioneers of back then showing the possibility of this kind of new age and this new way of doing business and everything else. So kind of with that, I kind of got inspired and just kind of rolled with it, want to create kind of my own freedom and my own, uh, design my own lifestyle and live the four hour work week or whatever it may be, but using these new tools and uh, new possibilities. That is really, really cool. I, I didn't know all the intricacies and, and that little backstory. I, I, <laughs> saw, I saw a video, actually, of you. Um, good, jo good job on creating a, a very enticing title. But it was like a live case study of like the four-hour work week. Right, oh, and so like the like the four hour work week myth. Yeah, the four like the four hour work week. It's like you know ten fifteen minutes of you guys, you know, telling your your story of creating Luxy Hair, creating that freedom. But then, um, I I think you guys you guys missed that chapter on you know filling the void. <laughs> and um, I think I thought it was so it was so interesting because you you have in the arena of entrepreneurs you have so many people chasing you know, whether it's material wealth or they're chasing, um, you know, like that, you know, they really believe that, you know, that could be achieved and you guys did achieve it, but yet you were, you, you said in the video that you, you guys were depressed at times or you weren't very, you didn't feel fulfilled. So maybe tell us a little bit about that because that's a pretty interesting perspective to have because I feel like everyone is just caught up in the race of getting there. And we mm -hmm. rarely hear about someone actually achieving it and then, and then kind of what that reality was. Yeah, sure. And I think many people kind of don't want to share that reality with people because, you know, sure. especially once you've achieved it and you're looked upon like a success, many people don't even want to be honest with others and themselves even. I think most importantly say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna, Yeah, I may be successful to some other people, but in reality, I'm going to depress this. And I'm not really fulfilled in any way. And it really takes, I guess, self-awareness and just being kind of honest with yourself to understand, like, what is it? Like, am I really fulfilled? And just, I guess, some backstory to some of the people that may be listening, like, okay, what are you talking about? Well, right, what happened yeah. was, like I said, we, we built our business with the intention of creating a lifestyle business, right? We really just want to make $1,500 a month each, meaning $3,000 together. It was me, uh, Mimi, and her sister that kind of co-founded the business together, mostly because we're all kind of in the same situation, unemployed and want, not wanting to work for corporate. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind it's of a good, it's it's a good source of motivation. I yeah, yeah, so that, that's really what kind of tied us together and wanted us to be, to create the same kind of vision together. So we did it in literally like, in three months' time, we launched the business from idea to start. And in the next two months' time, we were already, like, you know, probably doing, like, six figures. So we're probably doing, like, 
I think probably on the third month or second month, we're doing like 20K plus in revenue, um, which is like pretty huge considering we only want to make $1,500 a month. Right, right. Um, so, and we're already kind of paying off our like kind of debt and our initial investment and everything's just going so fast. And then we already booked this trip to South of France. And you can actually watch my whole like videos from back then. So I made like, I had actually made a 30 day challenge when we went to South of France and I made it's on my separate channel. It's called Finding Purpose actually. Uh, <laughs> and I have videos literally from back then where I was talking about kind of similar things I already talked about now. Yeah. And, but it was just super interesting. Even for me, if you go back, I'm like, wow, that was, that was me five years ago talking about the same stuff. Nothing's really changed. But I kind of, in it, for me, she kind of hit her right away. Um, for me, it took me about one to two years when I'm like, I have my dream car, I have a certain amount of money in the bank that I thought would make me feel safe. And then I'm like, okay, so what? And I got like super depressed. And I'm like, and for Mimi, because she's been experiencing those kind of feelings and anxieties in the past, and I never understood her, all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I get it. How do we get out of it? And so then I kind of, you know, quickly learned that, you know, some people get lost in the whole business and of making money, meaning, you know, they'll get a car, and let's say, for me it was like a three series convertible. For me that was like, oh, that was super cool. But let's say some nice. people will buy it, right? But some people will say they'll buy it and they'll be like, you know what, that's not enough. You know, maybe I'm not happy because I need a Ferrari, right? And then they'll kind of go out and work for more years and then they'll finally buy a Ferrari. And, like, and then they're not feeling fulfilled. Okay, be like, maybe I need a mansion and a Ferrari. Okay, cool. Then they get a mansion and a Ferrari. And then they're like, you know what, maybe like, I see like, I'm hanging out with these now, these rich people. Some of them have private jets. Maybe I need a private jet. So then they like, they, okay, then they chase away. And their whole life, they're chasing for this dream. And then in the four hour work week, actually, there's this great story I just kind of remember now. I don't know if you read it or recall it. It's the, the story of uh, the Mexican, Mexican fisherman. I, I, I've read the book, but I don't, I don't remember the story. Yeah, but the story is like, it's the same thing. Kind of, there's this, quickly, just a, there's a Mexican fisherman in Mexico. There's this hugely super successful NBA guy. He sees this fisherman and he's oh, like, yeah, what are yeah. you doing? Right? I don't care what And yeah, yeah. same thing, kind of, you know, at the end of it, it's like, what do you, why are you doing all this? What's the point? And that's kind of what I realized for myself. And I think that story also really helped me to realize, you know, like, what are you making money for? What's the end goal? Is it just to make money? If it's just to make money and it's not making you fulfilled, then what's the point? <laughs> so is that the story where like the guy was um he's fishing and like you know like he's asking this nba guy it's like why do we why do you need to keep making money and it's like he tells him it's like oh so you could you know have time to you know do what you like to do and then you know the guy realizes that he was doing what he loved to do like all along exactly he was doing it already he didn't even need to do all this because this guy would tell him like, you know you got it first you get a boat then you get more boats then you get even big <laughs> boats then you get a corporation you start doing fish to everyone is like what's the point so can so, you describe maybe the feeling of like that that period when you guys you know were you know three months in you guys were building this maybe you know you had an idea that it would work and then it actually did work and it worked even like you know like i don't know five ten times more than what you guys expected like could you describe like what did you guys feel initially um I, as you guys were you know booking the trips and like you know getting all that material wealth yeah i think i don't know like we, we booked the trip before we even made money so we kind of oh nice. <laughs> we, we kind of that was another uh, i guess naive or maybe it's, it's some people say stupid thing to do but we do like you know we're gonna make this happen and we and even then like i think when you have less money you're way more scrappier so even i'll say that month in, in the south of france i think we spent like all together, like maybe like two and a half thousand dollars each, which is like right. even less, which is probably even less. But pretty great considering you lived there for a month. We had like a, a view of the ocean and and we spent there a month and then we went to Paris. It was like, it was pretty incredible. And also, like, now I'm like, I, I don't even know how I booked trips for so cheap before because you, <laughs> you get it spoiled. Um, sure. But I guess kind of just then it wasn't it was just yeah it was thrilling at first but i think with anything nowadays it's like i think we all experience it right you can 
let's say buy a new car or you get a new house and you're really excited for like a second, right? Okay, maybe like a day, <laughs> maybe two, okay, maybe a week. It depends. Okay, it depends on the Instagram picture. I'm just joking. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but maybe, there's yes, there's some truth to that. Exactly. Okay, maybe a month. Okay, but the the thing is, it doesn't last. So I think then what I understood is like it's really what I, we asked ourselves a very important, important question that really made a difference. So you know, when's the last time you were genuinely happy, right? Like when's the last time you really were genuinely happy doing what you're doing? And I asked this question, like I said, this was two years in after I got everything. And I'm like, you know what? When we're starting a business, we're broke, had nothing, but we just had this vision and dream to make it real. That's when it was most exciting. It was actually doing the work that was most exciting. It wasn't just like being on the beach and just hanging out. That wasn't the most exciting part. It was actually Mm. creating that was the most exciting to us. And although even now, like, you know, we still take trips, we still travel, we still do all of that. That's why we live in London too. But we have a balance where still creation and work is probably number one. And that's what brings us the most still pleasure. But we still do our best to try to balance our life out by still traveling, by still exposing ourselves to different things. And it's more of a, an experience thing than just like, this is going to get me happy. Uh, but it's, it, so that, that's, there, there you have it. Yeah, um, you know, that, that's, that's, you know, really, really interesting. And I remember just listening to your story and saying, wow, like these, you know, these people have achieved all these wonderful things and achieved probably by everyone's, you know, f- from society standard, you know, success, right? And yet, you know, they felt this void and yet, you know, they, they weren't necessarily fulfilled. Um, and so maybe talk, tell us the next evolution of how did you guys go about fixing that problem in terms of, you know, the businesses that you've built up today? Yeah, I think it really, that question really made a difference. And then we said, you know, it was working together. Back then, we're kind of working just kind of from home. And we didn't have a routine. We didn't have a schedule. And what we understood was, And what we understood was, it was really about, you know, creating a routine and schedule for yourself, for your work and for your life, to not mix it all in one. Because before it would be like, you know, you work from home and you, let's say you work till three in the morning or something like that, or you pick certain hours you want to work. But then I, and I was always against the nine to five, right? I came from that world. um, It kind of scarred me. I'm like, I want to do anything with it like what's the point of an office what's the point of like working nine to five i was kind of a pure rebel both M- mimi and i right, right but but then we're like you know let's try this thing out i really believe this may work meaning having an office creating culture working together with other people um this idea of uh, having a place to go to where you create um, and I, and I understand and as soon as we kind of switched that, we got a beautiful office space in back then in Toronto and it was like Bloor and Spadina it was this incredible building. Um, and we kind of, you know, we hired people, we had a full-time videographer, we had some other people, everybody working together as like as a, as a unit. And in to this day, that's what we really try to create, whether it be here in London or in Toronto, it's people working together towards something. Um, and really delivering value for other people and also thinking of all the kind of new products and projects that we work on for example you know whether it be the five minute journal or the productivity planner those are really products all created really for myself first meaning i just want to see these products exist in my life i really don't care to make money on it uh, when we first it'll say built the five minute journals a way to me and uj coming together and kind of okay seeing how we can build something together and I, for him to show him how you can create a business. Yeah. But but then it was also about, most importantly, like, I want this product in my life. I want to use it. And I don't really care. <laughs> like, if, if, if it helps me out, cool. If, it, if, if, if we order, let's say, our minimum order quantity is 1,000 and we 
5,000, we sell 5 copies, and I have 995 left. Sweet, I'll use 100 myself, and I'll give away the others for free. Um, <laughs> right. So, but it's, but it's really driven from that, and everything you see now, whether it be the 5-minute journal, you know, like, it's growing, growing. I mean, you just had a call a few hours ago, and I'm like, dude, like, we need to hire people, we need to expand, and it's, and it, it was never intention, you know? It was, the intention was really to just create something that serves us and serves other people. And same as a productivity planner, like we did not expect to raise so much money and we could have even raised more, but it was, it was also from just, I'm like, Hey, I just, I just created this cause it helps when I do this, it helps me out. And I hope it helps others as well, as much as it helps me. And then boom, you know, we have a new business now. And we, of course we have other businesses that are brewing and we've been working on even some for years, but how I want to kind of just summarize and add this, all the businesses that we're working on now is is all about how to make a greater impact and mm-hmm. kind of create purpose for ourselves and for others. Because what I really believe in, you know, the future of work is really about, because it's not just about you. It's also when, when you have a team of people working for you, it's like, why would people work for you? Well, yeah, they'll work for you for a, for a paycheck. But beyond that, once you, say you pay them, you have to give them a higher purpose of meaning to be excited about work. And that's why we kind of created even for ourselves, we create a high, because like, what I've kind of realized then in a, the state of despair is really <laughs> I had no purpose, right? I, I, it's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You, you kind of get to a point where you have, you've covered all your bases. You yeah. have your, let's say you have your relationship, you have your friends, you have your safety, your comfort, you have everything you need, but then what? Well, you need to self-actualize. And like I said, for some people, it's a different thing. But I realized right away, I think most of us now living, especially in the Western world, we're, we're pretty good. Like we, we, Even the poorest of us still have running water and we have still have electricity and stuff like that. And a lot of us still have, you know, internet and things. <laughs> and, for sure, and yeah. Those kind of things. So we were very privileged and in a way... I think the whole idea of why people are so kind of depressed in the world is that, you know, they're, they don't have a, a, a purpose, really, a higher purpose for, for them to drive through, to create value for others. For some, you know, people get their kicks through, you know, having children and they get their hit of purpose there. For others, it's, it's maybe religion or whatever it may be. For us, you know, our purpose is really to create and kind of a better world and, reality that we want to live in so i think as an entrepreneur really what most entrepreneurs that i know of especially the really successful ones i met i met you know i hung out necker necker island a few times and i hung out with billionaires and i just see the same thing it's just it's just really people who are who want to mold the world to to the world that they want to live in so once you understand that you are all also a creator and you have that ability to create and shape the world, then that's how you get these ideas to kind of build products that you want to see exist. And like I said, it may take some time for you to, for you to get to, but I really believe that once you shift your mind to how you can kind of like, as, as, a, as a shift that you are a creator and you take responsibility for the things that you create and you're part of, then the whole everything shifts. Then just, it's like, I think Paul Quill has a quote, it's like, once you have a strong enough kind of dream or whatever, the whole universe conspires and helps you out. And that's really how I feel now, you know? And then, like I said, coming from a more of an impoverished background, um, it's like, and is, I'm just getting started. <laughs> 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 and I think, but the most important thing is, is like that I want to kind of tell you or anybody else listening is just all it really takes is is you kind of saying I, I want it you know I, I'm kind of kind of I want to make this reality and I see it and then once you once you do it so then and of course you take action then things start to happen for sure. I mean, you, you said so many things that I, I wanted to jump in, but you were like in flow and I was like, I'm just going to let Alex go. Um, 
No, I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, on, on the grateful, you know, being grateful point, I, I read some article recently that was saying that, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I wish I was an entrepreneur back then in the beginning of the, I don't know, dot com era or something. And, you know, maybe I could have created like, you know, one of these, you know, you know, Facebook or Twitter, one of these giants now. Um, but it was just looking at how amazing it is, how easy it is to start anything today in 2015. And, and how easy it is to just, you know, like, you know, you could be um, a Periscope star or an Instagram star and literally it just is the willingness to be able to do it, right? And, and saying that, you know, I want to create a life through this. And I love your, your point on, you know, everyone is a creator, you know, and that was something that I actually learned during the course of this sh- this podcast not this particular episode but um but just doing the show because i used to you know even when i started a few months ago the show's not very old but um i used to you know kind of view the world like oh it's like it's black and white in terms of like if you're an entrepreneur you're an entrepreneur you know like it, like you know no you know no respect for corporate and if you're in corporate then you know they you know a lot of you know people you know i went to business school as well a lot of people that you know are, are very bought into that maybe don't really understand people that are extremely entrepreneurial and you know i realized that it's not necessarily about labeling yourself as one or the other because we're all humans and we're all creators and it's all about you know it's not necessarily like, you know, the show's called The Inner Change Maker. And sometimes people are like, oh, so you like, you want to change the world. It's like, well, that is really, that's something great and it sounds great. But, you know, instead of changing the world, like, can you change yourself? You know, could you change and, and be a better leader for your family and be a better, you know, father, brother, or sister, whatever it is for you? Um, and so, so I love that point that, you know, anybody could be a creator. Maybe, you know, for people that, that are listening to this and, and finding great value from all the things that you've said about, you know, aligning yourself for your purpose. I, I know you've done like a lot of videos on this particular topic, um, but is there any like, maybe some some actionable tactics that helped you and Mimi when you guys were were you know I guess trying to figure out what that purpose or what that alignment might look like for yourself uh sure yeah I really believe it's everyone is on like an individual journey meaning you know it's very hard for anybody to say what your purpose is or what you'll do and I think for us, it was really about just consuming, you know, information and inspiration as much as possible, whether it be through listening to podcasts like these or talking through or in, and doing our best to be around interesting people. So like you mentioned earlier, what we were talking about, they say, sure, like each city has a, some sort of a community of, of people who are trying to say maybe create businesses for themselves or trying to create better purpose or value for other people. You, you, you were talking about TEP, uh, you know, as was a Toronto Entrepreneurs of Passion and Purpose, right, that our friend Floyd, Floyd uh, created. So yeah. going, to, or going to meetups and events like that. So I think all those things, like, they, all those things put together, they really help. And for us, kind of, like I said, it, it's, it's a continuous journey, meaning, you know, I, I listen, I don't read, I listen to a lot of books through Audible, and I hear other people's stories. I like to watch, also listen to podcasts and get different ideas. And then, most importantly, try different things that I listen or hear about myself. So if, if there's something that, for example, you know, it it resonates with me, I'm like, you know what, that's that's very interesting. Like, how, l- let me try to shift my mind and, sh- and, and start thinking like that for, you know, a week, a month and see what happens. Um, and then, so for example, even the ideal, say the five minute drill, one of the main inspirations was like Tony Robbins, right? And I did kind of earlier on one of his programs called get the edge. Okay. And, and there he actually talked about this whole idea of gratitude and gratitude walks. And I'm like, sure, let's give this a try. Right. And Mimi and I would go on these gratitude walks and say things we're grateful for that we have and we don't have. And this is something that we do to this day through now the five minute journal. Sometimes we do it in real life, but it's things like that. You know, we, you pick up some things, you try it out and you see actually your mind and your life shifting, right? So now kind of, you know, writing the five minute journal for years now, like I said, <laughs> my own product, like I, I use it for myself and, and you see how like 
your mind is different. I think differently. My, my total reality is different. But it's different because I put myself out there and I expose myself to different ideas. And the ones that resonate with me, I kind of try them out. And then that's really how I kind of, I guess, you get to be, it's like, am I living my purpose now? It's like, I think it's, a, it's an ongoing journey. I, they won't be like a f- day like, yes, I'm fully living it. Maybe it will be, right? <laughs> uh, but, but I think it's really, for me at this moment right now, how I feel, it's really an ongoing thing. Meaning you have to keep learning, you have to keep educating yourself and really um, you see life as a journey on itself. And I know it's very cliche, but I think so, I, I once overheard this is that it's, you know, we all think we're all trying to get to a point where we're like, okay, I'm full. Like I'm living my purpose. I'm like wealthy or I'm in this great relationship. You want to, you want to be like perfect. But the whole idea of like you being perfect or happy and having a state, it's, it's not a reality, in my opinion. In my mm. opinion, I think our whole life is really there to see ourselves that we're like an ongoing thing. Our whole life is really for us to improve and, and really kind of create different versions of ourselves. It's kind of like, you know, there's iPhone 1, 2, 3, whatever. You keep going up. And the same thing in your life. You yeah. kind of have to keep upgrading your software and your mind and your uh, your internals that you, the way you eat and everything but it's really a collective kind of journey of your whole being and state um and i think if you kind of live your life in a way of um i think it's, it's like called like a growth minded person if you live your life as a more of a growth a minded person and not just a static fixed mindset yeah then there's just opportunities always open up to you it's pretty incredible i i love that that analogy because it, it's very true to i mean you and mimi obviously through the the videos you guys do a lot of traveling whether it's for work or for for pleasure um and and then you know it's kind of a really good analogy for you know life is a journey right you're always you know, kind of to the next destination and off exploring and solving problems. So what's the next adventure for, you know, for you and, and Mimi in, in terms of being in London? Yeah, well, right now, working on a few things. Uh, Mimi is working on this really exciting book about relationships that um, we're all super excited about. <laughs> so, so it, it, That's it, awesome. It, yeah, and it's like I said, it's just sometimes... You know, ideas. Uh, I mean, we were just reading this book, I think Big Magic by yeah, the E. Pray Love, uh, Elizabeth Gilbert. Right. And it, it's like sometimes ideas come to you and they choose you as a creator. And I'm like, it's really exciting how this idea came to really Mimi. Me. Um, and we're, 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 we're probably going to launch 2016 early. But it's really, in my mind, it's like it's like a before and after, you know. What I mean is, like, there's some, let's say, ideas or books that once you get it, the world is different. You look at the world different. And Mimi's really working on one of those ideas, which I'm really excited about, um, with her friend Marianne. Wow. And, and, of course, we're all part of it. We all help out. We all kind of, you know, work together to improve it and make it better. Yeah. And then, and then of course, um, you know, we've been working on a, on a certain, you know, we're really into sustainability um, and we really believe that's the future of business. So we've been kind of working on that. Um, a new business can't say too much about it, but it's about sustainability. <laughs> and business. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, well, I mean, you know, I, I love that you, you mentioned that. I mean, that, that's really cool that she's doing that. I know I watched, um, a video that a really long video actually of of you guys talking about your relationship um, as well on on YouTube and uh, you know you guys really document a, a lot of you know the trials and tribulations of you know just your whole journey. Um, so, are there any resources like in terms of you, you mentioned like audio books? Um, any like go to that you always if people haven't read it, you're like I don't even want to talk to you until you read this type thing. <laughs> Are there any Bibles that you like always gift away type things? Yeah, for sure. Like in our office, we always stock multiple kind of units of the same book that we like to give away. 
Um, so, you know, if the most give away book by us will most likely be Lynchpin by Seth Godin. Oh, yeah. That's a great and, one. And really, like, and it's such a book, you really have to, it's, you have to read it multiple times. And it's not, I probably reread it every year. Same thing for his other book called I Curse Deception by Seth Godin. So it's along the same lines. Mm. But those I'll say are like the kind of the, the, the Bibles of today for what you really need to be and kind of your mindset in the current workplace and then the kind of era that we're living in. And it really helps helps you out to just understand your places in the world as, as a, really as a creator, as a, as a person. For sure. And then, and then I think it's very important to learn kind of about history, just how we came to be as beings. So a recent book that I finished that, I, that is my instant classic is uh, Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. And he's a professor out of Jerusalem. And there he just really talks about just how about, about home, like Homo sapiens is, and how just our evolution and history. And really in a way to kind of non biased meaning, of course everybody has a certain viewpoint, but he really tries to give you a blunt explanation of just how we came to be. And why I recommend this as a, as a book is I think it's very important, especially in business, you know, for you to understand that, uh, like the history, what's, what shapes us. And one of my biggest takeaways from that book is, you know, how we as humans create imagined realities, meaning the whole idea of, you know, countries and money and human rights even. That's all created by us, by people. And I think, like I said to my earlier point of us being creators, it's also a point of, like, for you to understand that you also can create new imagined realities for people to be part of and consume. So everything we create really even now through our videos or through our content, like why do it? Why create it? Well, we want to spread different ideas <laughs> and memes of how the world can be, right? And some, a lot of times people comment on our videos and they'll say like, oh, I wish there was more people like you. Well, <laughs> you can be <laughs> like us any day, right? And you can choose that by, like you said, by being that interchange maker in yourself. And that's the most important thing, right? Is the world really shifts when you shift. And all we, all we ever do is just try to be the best examples to ourselves, most importantly, because it's, it's important to who you look at in the mirror. And just once you kind of work on yourself, then the whole world shifts as well. I just I just got the uh, Sapiens on on the Kindle, so I plan on going through it. It it comes heavily recommended, um, so I'm really excited by the by those suggestions. Uh, last question I ask everyone this, so and you kind of alluded to it already, but um, <laughs> what you know when when we say the word change maker, what is your definition? What comes to mind for Alex Icon? Well, yeah, like I just said on the last point, is really uh, the biggest. You're a change maker by working on yourself first, and like your, you know, your podcast is. It truly is all starts there. When you, you know, I got into a relationship, with, you know, with the most amazing woman because I chose to work on myself. You know, before the same thing in a relationship, I still search for somebody, but then uh, until I said, hey, you know, screw trying to just find love. I'm going to instead try to work on myself and becoming a better person. That's when yeah. actually came into my life. When I chose to say, you know, screw money, I'm just going to work on myself and becoming a better person and create products that I want, all of a sudden money starts coming into my life. So what I, my whole point of is being a change maker, you really are a change maker by changing yourself to the way you want to be by working on yourself internally. Whether it be, like I said, through... Um, working out through what you eat through what you consume the kind of ideas and thoughts to it really comes from that I think that change maker really a, a positive or inspirational change maker is somebody ha who respects himself his body and most importantly his mind and he really does his all to protect that and then from that that's really how everything else changes around you Alex that is amazing where can people follow you and Mimi on your adventure there's a hundred places i can point them to but i figured i'd ask you <laughs> yeah, sure well you can just find me alex icon uh, i-k-o-n-n -N, across all platforms 
and of course on I recently started vlogging at least two to three times a week on my YouTube channel so I'm kind of changing it up a bit so you kind of just giving you a more behind the scenes of my life and what I do day to day so that's pretty exciting um, yeah I post about three times on my YouTube channel so check that out same thing on my Instagram uh, you can find me there no, it's really cool. I uh, I love that. Um, I mean, Casey Casey Neistat vlogs like like him and Gary Vee put up <laughs> so much content that um, I I love that you guys are doing um, something similar and keep the vlogs going. But um, you know, thank you for for spending the time with us today, sharing your wisdom, sharing your story, and uh, just really appreciate you um, just giving so much value to us and and the show. Sure. Thanks, Jay. All right. We'll talk to you later. That is it for this week's interview. Did you like what you heard? If so, please subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. We're building a community together for change makers under the belief that together we can change the world. Join the movement at www.theinnerchangemaker.com. You can also go there for show notes and additional resources not provided in the podcast. Until next time, live with passion, live your dream, and live it now.